Right, well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Lewis Cooper Experience podcast experience. I am your host, Lewis Cooper, and this is the experience. Um, I don't know what the strictest definition of a podcast is, so I'm just going to record myself talking about stuff and hopefully people find it entertaining. I've purchased myself a webcam today, um, so this is reasonably good picture quality. I'm not sure about the audio, I'm still playing with that, so if it is a problem, let me know. I mean, I'm going to listen back to it myself anyway. Um, yeah, basically, I just wanted to talk about a few things that I like, because, I mean, if you're watching this five years in the future, then welcome, this is internet history in the making, for those of you watching it right now especially. Um, but yeah, um, we're in a pretty awful time at the moment in general, and uh, I just, yeah, I thought I'm not going to talk about the event, I just want to talk about things that I like, um, namely films, comics and toys. Um, the lens on this camera is extremely wide, so it's getting more in than what I'm used to. Normally when I use the laptop camera, it just kind of gets, um, see if I can estimate this, kind of up that much in. Um, but this, you can see the side walls there and all my numerous posters. And you can see my stupidly small television where I consume most of my media. It looks really pathetic, to be honest. Um, yeah, um, I got this headset recently as well because you know I wanted to sit like this for a while, but all I had was a phone. So if you've watched my YouTube reviews and stuff, then you're probably used to me and what I normally do. Um, but I can only really do kind of short videos on the phone, so I wanted to do something a bit more sort of long form and that. Um, I mean, I'll see what happens. I've got a few ideas and things to talk about. I've written them down in front of me. Um, this will probably be ten minutes or so, the first one I think, and then um, we'll just see how it goes. I might change things up a little bit, um, but it's just something I just wanted to do regularly. Um, MJ Dixon, my good friend, and I have started doing a Gritty Reboots podcast over on the My Co channel, which I'll try and post a link to in this one. Um, he's got a much better setup than me, and so uh, and ours are a bit more organised, but uh, this is just my own kind of little thing I want to do. Might do it once a week, might not. Um, might do it for the rest of my life, however long that is. I might change my mind, who knows. Um, even considering doing like a live one at some point, because at the moment I'm just going to put this on Facebook and YouTube, I think. Um, so, but any suggestions or anything, just um, just let me know. Um, I might have guests at some point, if I can ever figure out how to do that. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is it, this is the beginning, so welcome. You're here at the very beginning, and you are cool. Um, my first section I'm going to call Movie of the Week. So I watch a lot of movies, particularly as we've been in lockdown, and I've just started keeping a list of all the movies I watched during lockdown. Um, and it's quite handy, I've, I've carried on doing it, even though we're, well, at the moment out of it. Um, and yeah, and I'm, well, it's good to look back at what I've watched. So the movie I've chosen this week is uh, a movie I watched a few days ago. I should say actually I'm recording this on Monday the 21st. I'll probably upload it on Wednesday the 23rd. Um, because we did a lot of podcast stuff on the Myco page this weekend and I thought that's a lot of Lewis Cooper content for a few days so um, I wanted to space it out a little bit but you know we'll see what happens but yeah I watched the movie a few days ago now but it'll be a few more days ago in the future when I upload this uh, it was uh, Terence Malick's The Tree of Life and it was an extremely arty film so I wouldn't say it's one to everyone's taste it's, it's a good length of time it's over two hours um, it's a Brad Pitt movie, well Brad Pitt is in it, um, I watched Inside the Actors Studio with Brad Pitt and they mentioned quite a lot of films that he's done and I really like Brad Pitt, I think he's one of the best in the world and of all time, I mean that's a bold statement and who am I to make such a statement, I'm just a guy. Um, but yeah I wanted to watch some of his more serious dramatic roles and stuff like that rather than sort of the bigger movies he's known for as well. Um, and. Yeah, Jessica Chastain and Sean Penn were in it as well. And it's just a story about a family and uh, just kind of the relationship between the father and the children growing up. But it is very ab abstract, like it, like to begin with it's very, very arty. And I was kind of thinking to myself, is this going to be a bit much for me? Because I like artistic stuff, but there is a point, I think, like I have to kind of have a kind of a narrative thread as you're watching it. But I mean, I stuck with it. Um, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say that it goes back to the beginning of time. Like it shows the planets being formed and then dinosaurs and stuff, and then it goes back to the modern times with this family, and it's and it jumps ahead into the future. And Sean Penn plays Brad, one of Brad Pitt's sons when they've grown up. Um, 
but yeah, it was. I mean, it's, you know, it's a bit confused, confused. Well, not confusing, but it's one of those ones where it's quite abstract, and you kind of go, you kind of. Well, I like films where you kind of make your own interpretation. Um, and Terence Malick's an, an interesting director in that he made two films in the 1970s, and then didn't make any, any major films until 1998. Like he made the Thin Red Line. Um, but yeah, um, I I liked it. I think I thought it was difficult going to start with. I wasn't sure, but I stuck with it and I liked it. So I think I bought it on Prime Video for five ninety nine because I wanted to watch it, and I, I don't I don't regret that at all. Um, I that's that's a good purchase. But yeah, The Tree of Life. That is my movie of the week. Just gonna have a little little sip here. Make sure you drink plenty of water, it's really good for you. Um, next section will be my, my comic of the week, or comic book of the week. Um, I've actually got it with me. Um, this is what I've been reading at the moment. It's Judge Dredd, the Carlos Esquerra collection. And Carlos Esquerra is, actually I'm covering up the art with my hand there, is the co-creator of Judge Dredd, along with John Wagner. And in my opinion, he's one of the best artists who's ever lived. He's one of my absolute favourites. Unfortunately, he passed away not too long ago. Um, literally in the day I was telling someone about him and his work and I, I, I showed my friend Tom a picture and I was like this guy's amazing there's some work, work he did on Preacher and then I found out he died which is really sad um, if you can see um, no hang on I'm pointing the wrong way this is all in reverse above my Terminator 2 poster there is not that one that one that is a, a poster of Carlos Esquerra that someone drew I can't remember the artist now after he passed away and it's him surrounded by all his characters and it's really nice but this I think came up before he died, and it's just a collection of his um, his Judge Dredd stories and Cursed Earth Coburn, who is the guy next to Judge Dredd there, and it's just a really lovely book. Like I think I've read a fair bit of it before, but I mean just just the little clip of like, the artwork there. That's from the Judge Dredd story Helter Skelter, which I read when it first came out. It was nice to read again. Um, there's a very satirical, silly story called Farts where there's like alien gas clouds called parts, which was quite funny. Um, but yeah, it's the stuff like this where it's out in the desert and it's like proper gritty kind of Judge Dredd stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm about halfway through it and I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, I've read a bit of it before, but I mean, the guy was just an incredible artist and it's really, really nice, nice to look at and really appreciate the great work that he did. Like legitimately, I think on the... Probably the most underrated comic book artist of all time, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, just read the Carlos Escara collection. I think uh, when I do comics, it might be ones the physical ones, or it might be ones that I've read on my like Kindle and stuff like that as well. But the the physical ones, I think, are better to kind of show, if you know what I mean. Um, next section is action figure of the week. I'm a bit of an action figure collector. It's more of a new thing. Like I've been collecting Lego for a little while, so maybe I'll change it up and have Lego of the week as well. Um, but I've recently got into like, action figures and that sort of thing, which is not a cheap game to be in, but also, in the past when I have bought action figures, I've never taken them out of the box, but I went out of the box quite now because they're a lot of fun. And we have this figure here. It's the DC uh, Multiverse McFarlane Toys Action Comics 1000 Superman. Um, it's a bit blurred, I know, when I bring it close to the camera, but it's a very nice figure. The face is a bit weird. You can't really get the full... Um, impact of it there but um the actually that's quite good i really like the coloring on the s um i like the cape i like the way it kind of curves around there um he's extremely poseable all these figures are very very good and now i can make him put double jointed knees as well and this you can do like the superman poses um so you want him flying you can have him up like that which is quite cool I think it's just a nice little display figure this one's cool because it comes with this stand so you can hook that I won't do it now because I need um, a bit more space but he um, you can hook it around his waist there so it looks like he's flying which is great for display purposes but yeah it's a very nice figure I like the colouring of it um, I like these McFarlane figures I think they're cool they're not too expensive they're about £20 when they first come out I think I got this for 15 and I got some money off it as well so they're really good. Um, there's a few little details, like his hairline's a bit iffy. Actually, no, this one's not too bad. But if you can see the top of his belt is red on there. Um, because I think that that's all one piece. And they just paint the yellow over the top, and they don't paint the yellow on top in case it clashes with the blue. But, you know, I'm not going to quibble over a small thing. 
um, yeah, he's a cool figure. He's very, very muscular, but then he is Superman. Um, yeah, that's it for my uh, my displays this week. Just gonna have another sip of water. Let me know if it's really loud when I drink water, because no one wants to hear that. Um, so the last section is going to be the news section. So mainly sort of news and entertainment and things that I've witnessed myself. I'm not going to talk about the real news because nobody wants to hear more about that. It's just awful, isn't it? Um, a couple of exciting trailers come out this week. It's hard to get excited about cinema stuff because we don't know when we're going to see them. Like, when are we going to see Black Widow? Who knows? No one knows at the moment. Um, the Mandalorian Season 2, uh, the trailer for that came out and it's only a little, little teaser, but that's cool. That's out in October, so not too far away. Um, I really like The Mandalorian. I thought it was going to be kind of a fun uh, bounty hunter Star Wars show, but it was um, a really, I found quite a touching story about a man and, well, a man who was a war orphan himself who adopted another war orphan kind of thing, and that was that was really what the show was about, which I didn't expect, but it, I really liked it. I thought it was a really good first series. Each episode is only about half an hour, sometimes a little bit more, which is perfect. I haven't, I haven't got the patience for hour long TV shows anymore, um, except. Sopranos if I'm re-watching that, it's the only exception. Um, um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. The trailer for WandaVision came out today as well, the next Marvel, or well, the first Marvel show on Disney+, Plus. the first of the new, you know, the big budget set in the MCU movie universe. Um, and I'm, I'm on board with that, I like, it looks quite weird and quite out there, and I really like Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch, and I like Paul Bettany as the Vision as well. Um, so that's going to be a bit of an instruction, it's kind of a more abstract part of the MCU. I know you use the word abstract a lot, maybe I'm starting to sound a bit snobby, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Catherine Han, is in it. Catherine Han is in it as well. I'm not really, I'm not sure what characters she's playing, but she looks like kind of an evil witch kind of character. And there's, there's a few of them in the Marvel Universe, so it could be any one of them really. Um, but yeah, that's the entertainment news. In other news, I, I saw a hot air balloon today, that was pretty cool. And I I saw at least six dogs today while I was driving to work and back, so that's it's not a bad number. It could always be more dogs, but I mean I'll take it. Um, and um, just getting some more news in here. Um, Joe Pesci is still alive, so that's good news. Joe Pesci still alive, the great Joe Pesci. Um, but yeah, that's probably much going to wrap it up for today. I mean that's about 13 minutes. That's not a bad. Not a bad number. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you haven't, please just don't tell me. No. Um, please say leave comments, any feedback, or if there's something you want to cover more, or if you like when I talk about films and you rather I just did that, then I'll do that, maybe. That depends who you are, if I respect your opinion or not. Um, but yeah, any other issues or anything you want to add, then please do let me know. Um, yeah, I'm going to call it a night there. Thank you very, very much for listening. Um, I have to do the YouTuber thing, that please leave a like and a comment and subscribe and share the video. And if you're going out, wear your mask, socially distance. Let's get all this over with as fast as we can. Please take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. This has been the Lewis Cooper Experience, podcast experience. Thank you very much.